Welcome, welcome again to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We're going to go over some numbers, talk about sales growth, appreciation, or lack thereof, and uh, you can glean from that. What you'd like most of this is uh, particularly Maricopa County. I don't know how the rest of the state is doing, but let's go through some of these numbers here that I got looked at this morning. The overall median sales price in October was 470000 The resale median price, so that's between new construction and resale. But let's put it in two different buckets here. The resale median sales price was 445 down 0 0.6 from October last year, but up 1.1% from last month in September. The new home median sales price was 538,422, up 1.8 from October 22, and up 12% from September. So new construction is doing well, and we all know why, because they're throwing everything at you but the kitchen sink. The incentives are huge. So that causes a lot of debate that says, you know, well, how healthy is housing if we're not throwing all these incentives at it? So if you look at a house that's 550000 and they're giving you 30000 in concessions, well, isn't the house really only worth five hundred twenty? Could be. That's uh, some of what we're seeing here, but time will tell. Here's the monthly median sales price. You can see that we peaked back here in May of 2022. Then we took a pretty big dip. So we went from a monthly median of 475 down to 410. That's that's a pretty good chunk. But then we came back up in June to 443, and now we're at 435. So if you look at where we came from the peak, which was 475 down to 435 for the median, that's kind of a true picture of what we're seeing at the current time. Now, the Cromford Market Index, uh, when these numbers cross here, uh, those prices are going to see more pricing pressure. But here's what we're seeing in the seven-day moving average is that new listings kind of started to creep up a little bit, came down after the weekend, and sales are still muddling along down here on the bottom. So the further those get apart, sales down here, new listings up there, then the more pricing pressure we have. And here's something interesting because I talked about new construction. So let's look at prices here and have a little chit chat. So right now, 40% of the homes are offering concessions with an average of $10,000. Back before the interest rate hikes, uh, let's go back down to here. Our average of concessions was only three grand. So the argument can be made on average that houses, whatever their list price is, you should automatically just lop off seven grand for new concession if you're going to do some kind of baseline figuring on house prices. So, so while house prices are staying relatively flat, the number of concessions are growing and the dollar amount of concessions are growing. Here's the Cromford Market Index as a predictor of future, future annual price appreciation. Kind of a busy chart. The darker line is the Cromford Index, and the blue line is price appreciation or lack thereof. The green line is inflation. So um, you take a look here, and this is 2008 when everything fell apart. The Cromford Index got down to a low of about, let's see, if I can get my mouse to stay right on it, right there. 40. Ooh, that's terrible. Minus. Cromford index, 40. Cromford index today is 121. It is turning down, so it's everybody's guess. Is it going to continue to turn down even further? And if it's a predictor of price appreciation, you can see that when it started coming down here, that prices did follow suit and came down. And then they've started to come back up a little bit. Why? Because Cromford Market Index was indicating that they were going to come up right there. So they did, in fact, come up. Now, when this line came down as harsh as it did, you can see where we ended up on appreciation. We ended up in the basement there. So when the Cromford Market Index took a sharp dive down, you know, we had double-digit losses in, uh, in homes. So... Um, Things can turn not relatively quickly, but in a matter of three or four months, you can tend to see a trend. And that's what we're trying to catch here on this channel is what kind of trends are we seeing? Well, right now, I'm seeing that our contract 
contract ratio is not anywhere near where it used to be, but uh, pricing seems to be held up with incentives. How long are the builders going to offer these incentives is anybody's guess. Uh, what it does say, and it does say loudly, is how interest rate sensitive the market is. Why are the builders offering incentives and what are people using them for? They're using it to buy down the rate. So they'll buy that house. They'll pay that price if they can afford the payment. If somebody comes in and buys down the rate. Now, you bought down the rate. You moved in the house. Is it worth what you paid for it? Probably not. Because if you were to turn around and sell it, you're not going to be able to offer 30000 in concessions. You just bought the place. So there's that argument. But then the other argument is, well, you got in a house with a good fixed rate that you're comfortable with. You may get to refinance in a couple of years, but I don't know. And you're comfortable with the payment. You're standing there. You're happy. You're fine. That's great. If you're getting into a house, uh, a resale house, and you got some concessions to buy down the rate, that could help as well. But if you're out there and you're paying the full rate now, you're actually not buying the house. You're kind of sitting back on your hands and waiting. And that's where the market is today. Now, I don't know how long this high contribution for seller closing costs is from sellers is going gonna, is gonna to continue. We're at 40%. Uh, we went considerably higher, but that was during the rate shock. I mean, everybody was just blown away by going from 3% to 7 as fast as they did. So they were throwing everything at you. And it was all iBuyers. iBuyers and builders just opened up the checkbook and said, here, here, here. And uh, they wanted to get rid of their inventory. We don't have that now with the iBuyers. They're barely playing in this market. But the builders have ramped it up. You look. You should see some of the emails I get. They're really kicking it up. They're not panicking because their sales are still up. They're doing quite well. They're building and finishing out projects, but they're not starting any new ones. So that might be a ticking time bomb for us down the road, like another three years. We could have another shortage. So if things shake out, interest rates get kind of stable, look attractive. Home prices maybe have come down between now and then, but oh no, there's another shortage. So I really don't know where this market is going to go. I just know now it's soft. It's not crashing. It had a rough, bumpy road in 2022. There's a lot of chatter now that says that it's over, and there's an awful lot of chatter that says it isn't. So keep watching here. We'll look at the real numbers here, tell you what's going on. No fluff, won't make anything up. And let's just continue to follow it. Do me a favor, punch that like button. Appreciate it. Take care.